Hi guys, my name is John Christian and we're here together with Future Music at the Art and Music Studios in Milan. And today we're going to open up the Next Level Logic project again. It's already been released, but it's nice to review some of the parts of the production. And that's what we're here for, so just check me out. So here we are looking at the project. Like I said, I started with the kick and the bass. So I'm going to play with those two parts of the track and then you can hear what, it, what it's like and then after that I go deeper into that. Well, if you listen to this, you hear a kick which is actually very long. Um, I did that because the other option would be to have a shorter kick and to use a sinus or something like that for the sub bass, but I was using the, the kick plugin from Nicky Romero for that. And I took it, the length is 714, which is actually very long. And it's in key, of course, it's in F this track. And I hope you have a good speaker system at your computer, because then you know that you can hear that it's a long kick. And the bass lines are coming from the silent. And actually there are two bass lines layered. And this is the first layer. I'm going to play it without the kick. And as you can hear, the reverb, which is on the bass line, is increasing during every bar. And it's also pitching. last part is even pitching a little bit more and the second layer is playing exactly the same but then with a different sound so together it sounds like this and together with the kick it sounds like this and normally uh, well the most of the, the songs that I know are just playing kick and bass like the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, and that's eighths but I chose to do it in 16, so it's like ta -uh, ta -uh, ta -uh, ta -uh. For me that was something different because I didn't hear that in another track and I, w and I still think that if you just only play this part, it's not really rolling that good. But still it's the fundament of this track. So that's about the kick and the bass. After that, uh, of course there is uh, the lead sound which is also a layer coming from four different sounds. This one is the first. And this one is a, a sound coming from the silent, which is layered with also a sound coming from the silent. There is a third, which is also coming from the silent. And the last layer is also coming from the silent, but it's really um, a layer to make it a little bit more specific because you can always use just uh, a saw or whatever, but to make it really uh, identical so it has my sound signature, I have to do something which is just not copyable, in my opinion. You get what I mean? It's just, well, it sounds like noise. But as a package, it sounds like this. And then when you click the bass on and the kick, you basically have the whole element, the, the, the main elements of the track already. So what I think it's cool about this track is that all the elements are very simple, but they are all very processed because this kick, well, well the kick is not so processed, but there's a heavy equalizer, which is pumping around 58 hertz and the bass line well normally I would never um, put reverb on the bass line but in this case it makes the sound way bigger because this is what it would sound like if I just mute the reverb for a bit oh, one second the tracks are frozen so I have to make the change in a different way. This is what it sounds like without the reverb on the bass. And the reverb itself is just a 
uh, a lexicon plate which is overdrived with a with a distortion kind of plugin, and also sidechained with the LFO tool because it just sticks to the bass and it's also playing the ta ta -a feeling. So it really is playing the same timing as the bass line, and then this all is the result. Of course, there is some drum loops and stuff coming up, so I will play you some of that. Um, I always try to avoid using uh, vengeance loops or whatever, so I try to make things myself. Not, not always, but sometimes I just use a few vengeance loops and then I cut off uh, a few pieces of it and to recreate some of my own loops. Because otherwise anybody can do the same, you know, and that's what I try to avoid. This is one of the things that it's playing. But it's really simple, it's just a hi-hat and clap. A tom, and if you just, just play it together with a kick, it's, this is the basic groove of the track. Here I have some extra claps. And also when it comes to make a signature sound, it's for me it's all about layering. and. You can just take a snare or a, or a clap from a sample library, but basically I think if you just connect a few sounds together, you can make your own sound. So this is one of the claps, together with this one, and then together with that one. And for me there is always, uh, there has to be a certain, um, um, it has to be levels in, in terms of depth, because here in front of my face there is the lead sound, behind that is the rest of the arrangement and there should be something in the back. And what I've done here to make it a little bit more powerful but also a little, little bit more atmospheric, there is uh, live claps. But not add so so it's not so loud in the mix, but it's just to give that atmosphere. Well, if I now just put everything on, the whole groove just sounds like this. And basically, that's it. And as you can see, again, the, all the elements are very simple of this track. And of course, when the track is building, I can go to the second drop. There's a little bit more playing there. Uh, let me see what we have. Uh, here I added an open hi-hat. It's just to make a little change between the first and the second drop. And at the last part of the second drop, it really has to be crazy and the most energetic. And that's the reason why I added some crashes there. play it solo it sounds like this just crashes but in total it sounds like this so basically we have all the elements here of the drop so in total it would sound like this I hope you can remember this track because then this whole thing makes more sense and then of course we have the break Break sounds like this. Because of my education on school, it was uh, really, well, in Holland they call it light music, but let's say jazzy. And that's the reason why I always try to find uh, chords who are not so simple. So if you just... Um, mute the lead sound. This is what it's playing. Not specific easy chords. And every time the chord hits it's different, so I was just tweaking with the notes until it fits the melody best. Okay, well, these chords are coming from the Nexus and it's also, it's again a layer package and the first layer sounds like this. The 
the second one like this. Uh, where is it? Come on. Ah, yeah. These are big synths. It's a combination between Silent and Nexus. And this whole package together makes this sound. And there's just one single sound above it and it's like this. And there's a lot of automation going on in here. And I'm, I don't know if we are able to zoom in on, the, on this. Okay, now that we are zoomed in on this particular part of the break, um, it's just the lead sound, which sounds like this. Now it changes. Well, to make that change, there is a little bit of automation going on there because it's been done with a filter. And to avoid a little bit of layering here, I was just trying to tweak this sound so hard with different um, uh, elements of the sound that I was just not in need of using layers uh, to get a particular sound. So one of the things that is layered is the LFO. You can see here there's a lot of um, automation going on there. I will make it even bigger. Then you can see what I've drawn there. It takes a lot of time to do it, but I think it really makes the song particular. The LFO comes up every time when the, the longer notes are playing. And besides that, the gain is coming up. Also, the, um, the rate of the LFO is coming up at the end of the four bars every time. That's really crazy at the end. And so, in total, this is the result of all that automation that's been done here. And together with the rest of the elements, it sounds like this. There's a little build-up going on here, but it's also simple because it's just claps and a snare. part we go to some kind of a pre-drop this is not the main element of the song but there is well there is actually a climax in the in the break and it sounds like this and to have this sound I had to change the kick because uh, when the drop is playing it's all going straight so I can have that long kick with uh, the F sinus under it but here the chords are changing, so what I needed to do is to take the same kick but then make it shorter. Sounds like this. And I have certain elements for the drums here, but it's very simple. Just a few claps and, and a kick. But what, was, what, what is a big difference is that the feeling of the kick and bass here is different than when the drop is being played. Here the bass line is playing the same as the chord. Oh well, it's just, just playing the ground note of the chords in the same timing as the rest of the, of the melodies and everything. So if you compare this with the drop, you are here it's that the same, use, uh, the same sounds are used, but then in a different way. Break is playing. Also, the ducking effect is different here because here it's in eighths, and here again is it the sixteenth thing. So basically, there are no elements playing in the drop the same as there are being played in the break. So I had to make everything again, which obviously is nice to do, but it takes time and. Well, that's basically the drop, uh, the, well, the pre-drop inside of the break. And then after that, we have this build-up piece here. It's just a melody and some kick drums. And, well, basically that's it. 
Then we are going to the last, oh well, the drops we already had. And now just one extra thing is going on here, because we have a third kick in this production. We have the kick of the drop, kick in the break, but we also have another kick on the intro. Because this is the kick which is playing in the intro, but it's already, again, different than the other kick in the break or in the drop. This is the drop kick. Again, and this is the intro kick. It has another punch because what I really think it's important in a, in a club edit that the first elements and the first punches of the kick are very clear so you can do a proper beat mix when you're playing the track live. So that was the reason why I changed uh, the kick in the intro. And there's just one last element there. One thing that is great about this track, at least I think it's great about the track, is that when somebody is using it in a DJ set, you already hear that the track is coming up over the track which has been played before that. And it's just because of one sound. Um, let me see, it's this sound. because it's very recognizable and it's there from the beginning. So when, when you use it in a DJ set, the bass frequencies you probably have uh, put down, but this is really coming straight through. So if you use this track over another track, this is the element that's already there. And basically that's the intro and to make it a little bit more deeper, there's a little arpeggio going on in the back, but it's it's not, nothing special, but it's really wide with a lot of reverb, and so it happens in the, in the back of the, of the production. Well, for this track, I'm using a lot of uh, in-the-box plugins from Logic. For instance, if we have the kick here, it's been played by the Nicky Romero kick plugin. Ah, this is the lead sound. Well, this is the... Let's unsolo it. This is the kick drum and then it's been processed just with a simple um, channel EQ from, from Logic inside. And let's see what have we got more. For instance we have here lead sound and lead sound are really processed a lot. So I'm going to just uh, bypass all the plugins so you can hear where it was coming from. This is the lead sound. But basically this is where it started with. And then I used uh, the CLA bass with some settings here from Chris Lord Elch, which is in the, um, in the Waves bundle. This is what it sounds like. And this is really giving that uh, biting mid-frequency what I was looking for. And then after that I've a stereo imager from Waves to make it wider, which is almost at the widest because I'm really into making uh, a lot of stereo image. And then there's a second uh, EQ going on with a lot of high frequencies here. You can see that in the end it's just extreme, it's 21 dBs of, of high frequencies and then to make it even more extreme there is a Pultec EQ above it, which is also giving more high frequencies, and this is the difference. This is without the Pultec. And now it really opens up with the Pultec. You can hear the difference. Without. With Pultec. And I really use a lot of the Pultec plugin for the high frequencies because it's, it has such brilliance. And let me see, I think there is another Pultec again on the bus because of course it were four layers that I've already told you about and then this is the total package and the total package I even use another EQ without the EQ and without the pull tag it would sound like this this is the EQ and another pull tag EQ for really having that biting sound over there and then 
What do I have more? Well, when it comes to mastering, in this case I used a lot of uh, plugins as well, but basically what well, would have been fun to just play you the track, how it would sound like without any mastering. And then it would sound like this. Let me put everything on. This is the whole track mastered and then I'm just going to bypass all the master plugins. This is what it sounds like without mastering. Really distorted. But to solve that, I just lower the. Um, I just start with an internal EQ of Logic and just lower the whole project with minus 10 dB. So then it's around the 0 dB again, and so I can start with my mastering. And here I already do some sub bass because I was boosting here 51 hertz and also 39 hertz because it's in F. And after that there is a stereo imager from SPL, which is called the SPL Vitalizer. It's always the second thing that I use on my um, master chain. Just to open the stereo image a little bit. Then after that I'm going to use the glue for a little compression. But the, the fun thing with the, the glue is that um, it basically is a parallel compressor because you mix the uncompressed results with the compressed results. And so it's a very powerful thing and that's the reason why they call it glue because it's just two signals blended together and the one is just unprocessed and the one is processed. Then after that my dear friend comes in, it's the Waves C4. Without it it sounds like this. push the bypass button then it will sound like this Without. and what I do basically is just multiband compressing but also coloring the whole mix a little bit and what I try to do is to make a really tight package before I go to the final uh, limiter so the limiter doesn't have to work that hard and one thing you can do that with is it with a multiband compressor because you just divide your frequency spectrum in four pieces and you just compress each piece of that separately and so you just can use a hard compressor on the sub frequencies and a not so hard compressor on the higher frequencies and so you can make a really tight package and after that I just use a second stereo imager so like I told, the stereo image was already opened by the SPL Vitalizer. But now I'm going to do it again with the S1 from Waves. And it would sound like this. This is without and now I'm going to push what I'm doing. And to make it clear, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. This is extreme. This is without. halfway so it's really twice stereo imaged but because of all that stereo imaging all the stereo sounds are really going to the side so you you create space for the middle parts this is the reason why if I use a stereo imager I do that right after I chose my kick drum so basically I have a kick drum and a bass and then I put on a stereo imager already because it's really messes up your mix if you're not doing it in the beginning of the process. If you just have a master already or, or if, if you have a mix already and you do the stereo imaging in the end of the process, well you'll really, your whole mix is destroyed there. Then I put on an extra equalizer. I think it was, yeah, it was just to tweak one fre frequency around 240 hertz, but it's just a correction EQ. And then one other thing that I always use is the twin tube from SPL. And it sounds like this. It 
it's just a little tube saturation thing. And then to really have the final limiting there, I use the max volume. But as you can see, it's not really doing so much anymore. It's just pushing two or three dBs in the peak. Okay guys, that's it for now. I hope you liked watching this video about Next Level. I would like to say thanks to Art and Music Recording Studios in Milan. And just feel free to send any promos to promo at johnchristian.nl and just follow me on Facebook and Twitter and everything. See you later guys, bye bye.